that God has given us. We're going to be singing about God's goodness and faithfulness in our lives. And if He has done that for you, I just want to encourage you to lift your voice up this morning in praise and in worship. 
Let him hear your heart about how much you value his goodness, faithfulness, and love. Father, we love you. We thank you for this house and this season. God, as we lift up our hearts to you this morning, we pray that a sweet incense is given. Lord, we love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Y'all ready to worship church? So darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven And I believe in signs and wonders And I have resurrection power Till the miracle that I just can't get over Testimony from death to life, cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'll testify. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Together, sons and daughters, walk with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises to the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started.
wasn't sure they were through yet. Didn't they do a great job? Oh, I tell you what, give them a good hand. Hey, remain standing with me just for a moment. Ryder, would you come up here, buddy? Come up here just for a second, Ryder. As Ryder is coming, these are a set of keys. You're going to be stranded. I don't know who these keys belong to. Connie, only you. Found them on the floor out there, Connie. All right. Say thank you, Pastor Harry. Hey, look about how old you, Ryder? 16. Tell them what you just won, Ryder. Uh, state champion. State champions. Bull riding or what? BMX. State champion what? BMX. BMX bicycle. State, not not local, not Dallas. State. Come on, you can do better than that. State champion right here. Good job, Ryder. Hey, man. That's pretty cool right there, isn't it? Hey, look at somebody. I haven't said this in a while. Find the saddest looking person you can and tell them everything is going to be all right. Everything. Bless you as you're seated in the house of the Lord this morning. Hey, we want to welcome you watching online as well as those that are in-house. Two congregations, one family. We appreciate each and every one of you being here today. I'm just going to tell you, holiday weekends can be tough. But boy, we've got a good-looking crowd here this morning. So thank you so much on this holiday weekend for doing the right thing and including Jesus in your holiday weekend. Amen. And the local church. Hey, if it's your first time with us, uh, or if you're watching online, text WELCOME. FC and give us your information. Text your phone number for texting information, your email address. Uh, we'll be sending out at least a couple of times a week information about all the exciting events that are taking place at Family Cathedral Church. But in order to do that, we have to have your information. If you're in the building this morning, you got a card right there in front of you in the chair back. Just fill that out, drop it in one of the offering containers. And again, we will get you on our email and text messaging list. Now get your hands together, church, and welcome our honored guests today for coming on this Sunday morning and worshiping with us. Got a couple of very quick announcements to make. Number one, everybody say first Wednesday. That's this Wednesday night. We'll be having food and fellowship beginning at 615. Just come on up and uh, we'll be in the right-hand corner back over here. And then at 7 o'clock, 7.05, somewhere in there, we'll be having a time of Bible study as well as the youth will be having their service. Amen. So uh, be making plans to be here. Uh, First Wednesdays are outstanding. Then I've got another special announcement. Everybody say two weeks from today. Here's why I have you repeat it. Not only if you hear it, if you hear it, you remember about 25, 30%. If you speak it, you remember 70 to 80%. So I want you to know two weeks from today, Pastor David Shivers. He's been with us many, many times before the last eight to 10 years. David normally speaks for us on Sunday morning of Super, Super Bowl Sunday, but it didn't work out this year with us just moving into this building. So he'll be here two weeks from today. The staff doesn't even know I'm making this uh, decision. Everybody wear your jersey, your favorite team jersey. To, David is chaplain of the Dallas Mavericks. And I've had the opportunity on different occasions to speak to the Dallas Mavericks pregame chapel service. It's because of that man that's going to be with us two weeks from today, Pastor David Shevers, Prestwood Baptist Church. So be making plans to be here and wear your favorite uh, team jersey. And I want to call it Every Chair Full Day. So everybody be making plans right now. Everybody be here September 18th, which is two weeks from today. You will love Pastor David shivers amen the man preaches to thousands on occasion they're the largest one of the largest baptist churches in all of america 20 something thousand members we make it plans to be here all right now we have opportunity to receive of our tithe and weekly offering so thank you so much i'm still on my subject of giving cheerful whatever you have to give what do we practice at this church we practice the tithing method that has supplied all of our needs for 56 years this month. So 
uh, I, I just let the Lord speak to your heart about what you need to give. But we practice the tithing method. Ten percent of our income goes to the Lord. Amen. We get to keep ninety. Isn't that a blessing? Glory to God. Let's pray over tithe and offering today. Father, we love you this morning. God, you're good to us. Thank you for your many, many blessings in our life. Thank you for this great church. For 56 years, you have met and supplied all of our needs according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for one more opportunity to give. And Father, again, I pray. You spoke to my heart over a month ago. Whatever Debbie and I give, we not only give it because it's the right thing to do, we also give it cheerfully as unto the Lord, not to a man, not to a church, not to a ministry, but we give it as unto the Lord. So I just pray, Father, you speak to our hearts one more Sunday, one more time. Bless and honor the gift. Bless and honor the giver of the gift as we walk in obedience to your word with the giving of our tithe and offering and giving it cheerfully because you love a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name we pray. We call it done. And everyone said together, Amen, amen. Bless you as you give this morning. We've got offering containers. You can also give online, 972-441-7476. Amen. There we go. Four ways you can give right there, church. And we make it every week. Somebody does all four of those things for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Brother Martin. As we're wrapping up our offering, let me just say this about our praise team. I was honored to speak yesterday at the Men of Honor Banquet Friday night and Men of Honor with Tony Rory, many ladies of honor, Saturday morning. And they had asked the stage was very small, so they could only have three up there. But they had Pastor Mark and Pastor Seth and Pastor Aaron on the drums up there. And I'm just telling you, I tell them this every other week. We have outstanding. I would put our praise and worship up against anybody's. I'm just telling you. When David Shivers from Presswood Baptist Church is here, he always, always, somewhere during the worship, two weeks from today, he'll lean over to me and say, Pastor Harry, your worship's not any better, but I'm just telling you, your worship is just as good as what we have at Presserwood Baptist Church. And it is, because I've been there. He said, but there's just something different about it. He said, Harry Lee, I just got to tell you, there's something different. And I always tell him, David, that's the Holy Ghost. But anyway, he claims he's Baptocostal, and I love him like a brother, man. He does a great job. Speaking of loving someone, let's stand our feet, say our Bible creed, hold your hand or your Bible or your iPad in reverence to the Lord, let's say our Bible creed, and I'm going to get out of the way, we're going to turn this thing over to Pastor Jeremy Suter. Are we ready to go? Here we go. This is the word of God, this is my word from God, obedience to this word is the only weapon that I have. If I'll read this word, do exactly as it says, according to the book of Joshua, chapter number one, I will, come on, I will prosper in every area of my life. I can be what this word says I can be. I can do what this word says I can do. Thanks, say that line again. Thank you, Father, for revealing your word to me today, and I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. And put your Bible in your chair, and let's give it up for Pastor Jeremy Souter as he brings the word this morning. Go for it, Pastor Jeremy. You can be seated. Unless you want to stand the whole time. Um, so I'm going to pick up where I left off a couple weeks ago. And I, I mean, I remember part of the message I was, okay, a couple weeks ago. The seed, right? So I had 12 points, and I really thought I'd get through it in one sitting, but I didn't get through it in one sitting. So uh, I want to finish that up, and I'm just going to recap real quick. A seed is very powerful. A seed is something small to start with, but it grows into something bigger. And I'm going to run through the first six points real quick. All right, remember the Micro Machines commercial, the guy that talked real fast? Some of y'all remember that? Okay, get ready. Number one, access is the seed for opportunity. Access is the seed for opportunity. It's the opportunity to reveal your difference, reveal your talents, gifts, and passion. 
Number two, battle is seed for territory. And we talked about that. Anytime you go into a new territory, there's going to be battles. There's going to be battles you're going to face to get once you're in that new territory. The children of Israel, when did they face the giants? When they were in the promised land. Number three, number three, thankfulness is the seed for joy. We talked about that. Be thankful. Be thankful. Everybody say that. Thankfulness is the seed for joy. Confrontation, number four, confrontation is the seed for change. I could go back and preach on that again, but uh, I'll, I'll leave you with one nugget from that. Anything unconfronted increases in your life. Anything unconfronted increases in your life. You have to confront what you don't like, otherwise it's going to fester inside you. Does that make sense? Good. And when you confront people, remember I said this, when you confront people, it's showing you care. So when somebody confronts you, don't look at it as something negative. Look at it because they care about you. Does that make sense? Somebody need to hear that. Number five, this is for y'all that weren't listening. Listening is the seed for knowledge. <laughs> listening, yeah, Stephen, <laughs> listening is the seed for knowledge. Listen to what these pastors and people have to say. Number six, honor is the seed for access. If you do not honor people, your future will be decided by who you choose to honor. If you don't honor people and you don't honor authority and you don't honor elders, you will not have a good future. Ephesians says it. Not just obey your parents, but honor your father and your mother. Honor people with the right words through kindness and through respect. This gets me to number seven. This is where we pick up. Number seven, presentation is the seed for acceptance. And you say, well, that's not in the Bible. Yeah, it is. 1 Samuel 16, 7. For the Lord does not see as man sees. Right? We've all heard this. God looks on the what? The he looks on the inside, but who looks on the outside? Man, man looks on the outward. If you want a job, you're not going to show up looking like you don't want that job. You're not going to say, I got an interview next week, so I'm not going to shower, change my clothes brush my teeth, wash my hair, nothing. I'm just going to show up. Right? So to a certain extent, we have to be accepted by man if you want to go further. Presentation is the seed for acceptance. Man looks on that outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Well, all I care about is what God cares about. I care about what God cares about too, but I also want a job. And I want other people to see me as Jesus sees me. So if I look like a slob and I'm up here preaching, are people probably going to listen to me? Probably not. Probably not. What was that? Representing. Representing, right. We represent. Show up in a purple robe and, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you got to go, you, you got to, you got. Who fishes? You deceive that fish by what? putting a worm on the hook so see i mean i'm just saying you every fisherman has a hook and the worm is the presentation to get that fish to bite right number eight words are seeds for feelings words are seeds for feelings i've said this before words paint pictures words are like if you have a heart attack if you have heart problems what kind of pill you take Nitro pills. My, my papa took nitro pills because he had heart problems. Words can heal and words can blow up bridges. Nitro can blow up bridges. You can blow up a bridge with nitroglycerin, but you can also heal your heart. You can also take care of your heart that way. They take nitro pills. To life itself, to attitudes and everything, else because words are seeds for feelings. You can speak words that produce bad feelings and you can produce words that present what? Good feelings. Think before we speak. That's hard. Woo! Isn't it? Men? I mean, because a lot of times it's us men, right? That we don't think before we speak. We just speak. And then we start thinking after we speak. Like, what was I thinking? Anybody ever done that? You start saying stuff and you're like, 
man, what was I thinking? Well, if you would have thought before you spoke, God loved words so much, he named himself that. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the what was God? The Word was God. God loves words just like he loves numbers. Words matter. Number nine, order is the seed, pro- order is the seed for productivity. How many of you like order in your life? When you have order in your life, things are kind of going good, right? It makes you happy. If you're not happy, go wash your car. Like if people are writing, wash me on your car, go wash it. Your day will be better. (laughs) Men, clean your closet. What? what? (laughs) You'll be amazed at what order does in your life. When you have that order, whenever you have a a plan written out. How many of you, when you go on voca- vacations, most of the time you have like a, you know, an agenda of what you want to do whenever you go on vacation? A lot of times, unless you're going to the beach. Like if I go to the beach, hey, we're going to the beach the next five days, I'm just going to the beach. What, you're, what are you going to do? I'm going to go to the beach. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go hang out on the beach. I'm going to go sit in a chair. I'm going to get burnt. And then I'm going to complain about being burnt. And then I'm going to be all dark and tan. And I'm going to go eat. That's all I want to do. But when we went to Disney World, we had a plan. We had an order. We knew what, like, these are must that we must do. I have to get my picture made with Belle. That's just, I mean, it's a given. It's it's order. And whenever you have order in your life, you're happier. I mean, does anybody else just wake up and just be like, I mean, well, there are some people that are like, they just kind of float by the seat of their pants. And you're like, man, I wish I could be carefree like you. Like, you don't even have any kind of structure, but you're... You're happy, but you know what I'm saying? Is it just me or do you? I mean, I like order. I like things. I like to know what's taking place. I like having a clean closet. I like having clean cars. I like having clean house. You know what I'm saying? It makes you feel happy. Number 10, problems. Problems are seeds for recognition. Problems are seeds for recognition. A problem is an invitation to significance. A problem is your chance to reveal who you are. A problem is a chance to reveal your talent. A problem is to reveal your ability, your skill, your confidence. See, so whenever somebody comes to you with a problem, if you've been through that situation before, it's time for you to share your talent, your gift, your ability, because you can relate to that and you can help those people. If you want to know how to build a house, don't come to me. My wife agrees. If you need something like torn down and built back up in your house, don't come to me. My skill, my talent, my ability is not going to be good. It's not going to happen. Go to those people. When, When people have a problem in their life, I do try to think of people that can relate to them. Because when you have a problem, doesn't it make it like a little easier when you can go to somebody that you know has been through that problem before? Yeah, right? Just five or six of us. That's good. The rest of you, if you have a that's, that's your problem. You're not going to the people that's been through that. Because I guarantee you, if you've had a problem or you have a problem, there's somebody in here that's gone through that problem and can walk you through it. Does that make sense? A problem is not something that we need to run from. We need to go to it. Because on the other side of that's our promised land. David, think about it. Did David run from Goliath? No, David, he saw the problem and was like, why y'all running? Or wait a minute, he's like, why y'all running? (laughs) He took off running to the problem. He went to the issue, faced the problem, and hit it head on. Literally. (laughs) Joseph, when he saw the butler and the baker, he saw that they had a problem. He saw that they had a problem, and they recognized that they were sad. It's a problem. Number 11. Ben, y'all can go ahead and come on up. I'm closing. I love it. Oh, Tori just sat down. Sorry, Tori. Every, band except for Tori. Y'all can, she can wait one more point. <laughs> Number 11, confession is the seed for mercy. 
Confession is the seed. You want mercy in your life? Sometimes you got to confess it. God is a God of grace and what? Mercy. We don't deserve it, but he gives us that. John, th- John, Jonah 3.10 said this, And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. This is the story of Jonah and going to Nineveh. Their evil way. And God repented, repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. One man went to Nineveh and preached. And revival broke out when he finally did it. He was scared to face that problem. And then when he was in the belly of the well for like three days, three nights, he decided, this is a problem. I need to get out of this problem, and I need to go face the other problem. And then when he did, the people started confessing their sins. Confession is the seed for mercy. If you want mercy, all you have to do is start confessing to God. Start saying, I'm sorry, I did it. Repentance is the seed for forgiveness. Confession is recognizing it and having a and admitting that you have a problem, but repentance goes a step further. Repentance goes a step further and says, I did it, I'm sorry. And by God's grace, I will not go back and do it again. Because without his grace, it ain't happening. Are you going to stumble? Are you going to fall again? Yes, but by the grace of God, you can move forward. Do we really understand grace? That'll preach. That's exactly right. That will preach in itself. Great. How many of y'all like gifts? When you get a gift, you get a gift for no reason. Like people can give you something. I like gifts. I like gifts. You can give me something, and I won't give you nothing back in return. Jesus, (laughs) Jesus gives us the gift of mercy. You don't, the song we sang it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. God's grace is so powerful. Grab a hold of that. Repentance says, I did it, I'm sorry, and by God's grace, it will not happen anymore. Because you can't do it on your own, only through God's grace. Number 12, and I did mention this point, but it's, it's still powerful enough to share again. But last point is today is the seed for tomorrow. Today is the seed for tomorrow. You're not going to have a different day tomorrow than you are today. Nothing's going to change in your life if you don't confront it. If you don't deal with it, if you don't face that problem... It's still going to be there tomorrow. If you came this morning and you got some kind of an addiction that's destroying your life, that's just beating you down, it could be any kind of addiction. Don't just think drugs and alcohol. There's other things that you can be addicted to. It's destroying your life. and Nothing's going to change magically. It's going to change by the grace of God. And today is the seed for tomorrow. See, Joe's Crab Shack has free crab tomorrow. And then tomorrow, and then tomorrow, and then tomorrow. But if you want to change your life, today's the day. Not tomorrow. Because tomorrow may never be here. No man knows the hour. It could happen just like that. Don't wait and say, I'm going to to make things right tomorrow. I'm going to give my life to Christ tomorrow. Make a stand and do something Today, Proverbs 27, 1 says, don't brashly announce what you're going to do tomorrow. See, I got all these plans tomorrow. It's Labor Day. I got to work. Like, work, work, work. It's Labor Day. I thought everybody worked on Labor Day. No, I don't have any plans tomorrow. But tomorrow may never be here. I'm not guaranteed to walk out this door and drive off and make it home. I may, by the grace of God. James 4, 13 through 14 says, look here. Who people, you people who say today or tomorrow we are going to do such and such a town. Stay there a year and open up a profitable business. See, some of you got ideas that you're thinking, well, in a year from now or six months from now, I'm going to get on that. No, today's the day. Today's the day. Start today. How do you know what is going to happen tomorrow? For the length of your lives is uncertain as the morning fog. Now you see it, now you don't. And soon it's gone. When you begin to understand that 
that and you realize that today's the day of salvation. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today's the day. Not tomorrow. Today is the day. Repentance is the seed for mercy and grace and love of God. At the moment you say it, all of heaven will come running to you. When Jonah preached to Nineveh, they repented. They repented. They got that grace and that mercy. Nothing's better than giving your life to Christ today. Nothing's better. No man knows the day. No man knows the hour. Is this church a church of the midnight hour? A little nugget for next week. Next week I'm going to be kind of talking about the Lord. Not Well, I'm going to read the passage of the Lord's Prayer. But what I want to talk about is what's after that. And it talks about a man coming, banging on the door at the midnight hour. And everybody that's a believer knows that the midnight hour represents what? Christ coming. Are we a church? Are we a church that's ready for the midnight hour? Today's the day of salvation. If you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I just want you to slip your hand up for me real quick. I know we ain't st- we're not standing, eyes are like open, so you know what? Jesus died on the cross, sorry. All the world watched him. Anybody here doesn't know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, raise your hand real quick. We may all be believers here, and that's cool. I love that. I love that. All right, second. Second thing is this. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I've got stuff that I need to confront. I, got, I, I don't want to wait till tomorrow. I don't want to wait till next week or next month or next year or two years or whatever. There's things in my life that I need to take care of today. Will you remember me in prayer? Just slip your hand up. Come on. Come on. Hands all across. That's right. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? If that's you, I just want you to stand up. Stand up where you're at real quick. Stand up. Now, here's what we're going to do. You see the people standing up. We're an active church. We are a participating church. I just want you to stretch your hands towards them, place your hand on their shoulder. As I pray, you pray. My prayer is not more powerful than your prayer. There's no such thing as a better prayer than, a, than my prayer is better than yours. I can't pray a better prayer than you. But this is a church that's going to be participating We're not just going to be taken off the shelf all the time. We're going to be stocking the shelf. We're going to want people coming to us to get stuff off of us. Amen? Stand with me, everybody else. Father, I thank you for this day. God, these people say, I need to make a change today, not tomorrow. God, I pray that you just quicken their heart, quicken their spirit, Father. Some of us may not, we may not know what to do, like how to handle this problem, but God, I pray you speak to them divinely, supernaturally, show them how, show them who they may need to go to to help them in this situation, in this problem, and things that need to be confronted. Let them feel your grace and your mercy. Father, your grace is so sufficient. Thank you for your grace. Something we don't deserve. Speak to these people. Father, don't let this be a church that's just spectators. Be participators. Are we ready for the midnight hour? Are we truly ready for the midnight hour? God, I pray you equip us and you show us so we can be a church of the midnight hour that's ready for the coming and ready for people knocking on the door. The harvest is full. God, I picture this harvest that's out there. But there's not a many, there's not many laborers. And if we don't tend to that harvest, it's just going to die and wither away. Bless these people. Bless this church, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Pastor, you want to grab that mic? You want to go ahead and grab that mic? I'm going to let Pastor close us out. He's got something he wants to do, so I'm going to turn it over to Pastor. Thank you.
you, Lord. Good word, Pastor. Pastor Jeremy, appreciate good word. Yeah, man. Help us, Lord. If uh, I'm going to ask my son-in-law, my family, uh, Keith and Stephanie, come up, my family come stand with them if they would. Uh, it's not, you know, not all that often that we we try to battle our own battles because so many people are going through tougher stuff than us. And uh, so, but today, my family needs prayer. Keith needs prayer. Uh, you want me to just tell them what's going on? Stephanie, is that okay? You want to tell them? Would you mind coming? You tell them. That way you can tell them whatever you want to tell them. Can you step up here? You, you tell him which one. There's not a whole lot of details to share, but he's had a growth on his um, nose right by his eye that kind of been watching for a few years, and it started looking a little suspicious, so I talked him into going to the doctor, and it's a type of skin cancer. Um, they're pretty confident that it's going to be okay. Um, he goes in Thursday for it to be removed, and I don't know what type of reconstruction situation they're going to have to do, but um, it is kind of by his eye, so... Um, we're, we're just going to um, believe that everything's going to be okay. Um, he's, a, he's a good husband, good dad, and he never, um, he never asks for anything. He's, he's one of the best husbands I've ever seen, and he serves his family well. So this is our time to um, let him know that we love him, and all of your prayers would be um, really appreciated. Amen. If you want to come stand with us, you know, anybody else needs prayer, just come on. If you want to come stand uh, with them here, that'd be fine. Billy Mac, Bob, if y'all want to come stand with them here. Thank you, Lord. Let me know God's a miracle working God. Amen. And uh, so come on here, Billy Mac, Bobby. Anyone's welcome to come. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Pastor Doug, why don't you come up here and pray for my son-in-law. One thing, uh, Stephanie and Keith are pretty tough, but it's right by the nerve endings to his eye. And there's concern about that as there are the cancer. So just, it's twofold here. So we're just going to pray that the cancer will be gone, be removed, and uh, his eye will be okay. Is that all right? I just want to put that out there. Amen. Pastor Doug. Amen. We're going to believe in faith. The devil's a liar this morning. Yes, he is. We believe in God for his miracle working power. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, today. Father, you say we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain help in the time when we need mercy, Father, so we thank you, God. We rebuke this circumstance in this mighty young man's life, Father. We thank you for the doctors and all that they know to do. But, Father, you are the great physician this morning. And, Lord, we lean upon you. We run to you. Your word says that you're that high tower that the righteous run into and are saved. We run to you today, Father. We stop and we worship you and praise you and thank you, Lord, for Keith's life. Father, we thank you for his faithfulness, Lord, for his commitment to his family, Lord. And, Father, we thank you, God, that everything is going to be all right with him, Father. Lord, we thank you. Everything concerning his eyes and the, and the nerves and everything involved there, Father, physically, we give you praise, Lord God, for your miracle working power in his life. The Word said, if any two agree, Lord, we agree this morning as a church family. We agree this morning, Father, for your miracle working power in his life. We ask you, Lord, to give these doctors wisdom. Lord, we ask you, Father, to guide their hands, Lord Jesus. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, that we're going to come to stand and recognize that you brought him through. He's going to have a testimony, Father, about this test. Now, Father, we look to you today in advance. We give you all the praise, all the thanks, and all the glory. For this we ask this morning in Jesus' sweet, Jesus, sweet and precious and mighty name. And God's children said, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
We're just believing God for a good report. Amen. And uh, we'll keep everybody posted here. But I love my daughter and son-in-law. They're pretty tough. They've been through some stuff like just about everybody else has. But they don't say a whole lot about it. But they're pretty tough. And I love them and appreciate them. And thank you all so much. We'll keep you posted. And I'm, and I'm just believing God everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling. Everything going to be all right. Amen. Amen. All right, if you just go back to your seats, be seated for one moment. We're going to close our service here today and uh, going to give an update on our parking, let everybody know what's kind of what's going on. Uh, I think, I think what... Walt, you got... Come on down and Bill Hall. Give us another second, church. Give us another second. We've got two more we need to pray for. Walt and Bill Hall. Where's Bill? Bill went at home after the first service. Give me some men to come stand around Walt here today. Got a heart procedure. On, it's Tuesday, Wednesday. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for Walt today. And, and, and Father, anyone else that's physically has issues today. Once again, we pray for Don Hirschfeld at home there. Father, we pray for Walt today. Anyone else, Lord, it's not important I know what's important you know, but we are a church of prayer. So we pray for Walt today. We're going to believe for a good report in Walt's life as well. Whose report are we going to believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord. We're believing you for three good reports this week. For Bill Hall. We're praying for Bill Hall as well, Father. Thank you for doctors and hospitals and medical technology and medicine. But at the end of the day, you, O oh God, are the great physician. And you, O oh God, are the great healer. So we pray for Walt today. By your stripes, by your stripes, we have been healed. We are healed. Present tense. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Beloved, above all things, I pray that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Amen. Amen. All right, you can be seated one more time. Thank you for reminding me of that, Pastor Doug. Appreciate that. Our, uh, man, <laughs> I don't even know what to tell you. Our parking deal just goes on and on. They brought to our attention this week. We are down to $12,000 on our, what we owe if we can just get started. And you've almost, you know, sometimes you just got to laugh. But some of you folks, Billy Mack over there, he's going to be helping us build the, add the parking and build the building. And I've talked to probably six or eight builders this week. And I'm, it, it, this is crazy. Out of the clear blue, they brought it to our attention. They want us to add, it appears, another fire hydrant. Church, we're adding concrete. Last I checked, concrete doesn't burn. But anyway, it just goes on and on. I mean, I'm just like, this is crazy. This is absolute. I've built not as much as some of you have, but I've built a few million in my life. We're having to add a fire hydrant because we're adding concrete. Not a building, concrete. But anyway, it is what it is, and we're going to get there. We are, we are not, when things go wrong, we are not going to quit, amen? So it's going to happen. We'll know Tuesday. I'm just, I'm just a messenger, but we are going to get there in Jesus' name. And our goal is one time we get through this and they know us and we know them on a first-name basis. They say we're good people. And uh, to God be the glory as we build going forward. Amen. So let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart uh, what you'd like to give today to our building fund. And uh, we'll appreciate it so very, very much. And again, I want to leave it on a positive. I don't understand it but we're going to get there. Amen. Father, we love you today. Uh, in, in, in man's eyes, it's just kind of crazy what's going on. But Father, sometimes we have to listen to our own tapes. Sometimes we have to listen to our own messages. And the last I checked, your word says, in everything, give thanks. And the last I checked, your word says in the book of Ephesians, give thanks for all things. And why can we do that? How can we do that? Because Romans 8 says, 
all things are working together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. We love God. This church is called according to your purpose. Therefore, it's working together somehow, some way, even though we don't see it right now, it's working together for good. So we pray for favor with the city that it will happen. Whatever needs to take place, it will happen. And we're asking for favor today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen. Bless you as you give. The containers are here. You can give online. Again, you've got the information how you give online. And uh, I already put mine in there. All right. Let's stand together. If you've got an offering you want to give, bringing it to the front. you got offering envelopes in front of you there. And uh, obviously you can give online, 972 441 Seven six, there it is, right there. All right, stretch forth your hand this way, then the praise team is going to sing us out. The spoken priestly blessing, right out of the Word of God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and give you His peace, a peace the world cannot give, and therefore the world cannot take away. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Listen. Don't just take off out that door. Find somebody, hug their neck, tell them Jesus loves them. Encourage them in the love of the Lord. Bless you as you go. Another great Sunday at Family Cathedral. Sing us out, praise team. Go for it.
just what to do. 